because this is how you fix all these problems. And we talked about this before. Taxes is how you fix most of the problems in this country. If we just tax things more fairly, more reasonably, things would be better. But you got to remember, taxes are socialists, so they must be bad. And socialists are evil. Yeah, and life in Norway, man, those Norwegians are miserable. I know. That's why they have the, the highest rating on the happiness chart. <laughs> they're... Right. It's cold as all get out there, but they're like, listen, we got health care. When you have babies, you can stay at home with them for a while. No student Regardless loans. Of which you are. We don't have student loans because and people can get educated to have the whatever jobs they want to have. Yeah. Man, miserable. Sucks, bro. Hate to be them. All right, so we looked at this video before, but this is just to give you a sam sample of how kind of taxes are broken down between the rich and the poor. These 10 people represent everyone in America. This person on the left, she represents the poorest 10% of Americans. And on the right, he is the very richest 10%. So let's ask this group a simple question. What percentage of your income gets taxed? Most Americans pay multiple income taxes to the federal government and state governments and local governments. But a recent analysis by two economists added up all the income taxes. And when you do that, the data shows that poor people pay a very small part of their income to the government and rich people pay more. And that's true. That is true. In fact, uh, a lot of the poorest Americans don't really pay any tax because they get money back from the government an income tax. Okay. Well, income tax is one thing. What's the other thing? Well, income tax isn't the only other, isn't the only type of tax. You pay state taxes, local taxes, you pay consumption taxes, you pay payroll taxes and all this other stuff. So let's break that all down and look at what we're really talking about here. When we put these taxes together, let me go back one sec here. You and the taxes that come with them cost them almost everything they earn. So if we chart how much of their income each of these people pays in consumption taxes, we can see that poor people pay a much larger portion. When we put these taxes together, suddenly we see a big change. So as you can see, the poor pay more than the richest Americans. Even the rich Americans, the top 10%, pay less than the one. The top 1% who has all the money, <laughs> over 90% of all the money, Pays less Paying than least in taxes. Pays yeah. the least. So that's kind of screwed up. So <clears throat> now, if they were paying Social Security above one hundred sixty thousand, that would go up a little bit, wouldn't it? If we were paying a fair share of tax, that would go up a little bit. So let's look at this other. Another quick video from Vox, but I'm just going to watch this clip. So this is because Warren Buffett's bitched about how he pays less in tax than his secretary. Who actually makes a good living, but but he's complained about why is that? You know? In the U.S., the disparity between the richest Americans and everyone else has been growing. And in the last 40 years, the after-tax income of the richest has risen more than 400% while middle class income has only risen 50. The way these people make money is very different than the way these people make money. And they're not taxed the same. I pay less in taxes than people that work for a living and make as much money as I do. This is Morris. He used to work on Wall Street. Now he's retired and lives off his many stock market investments. I own stock in companies, like Berkshire Hathaway and Amazon and Apple. He's a pretty typical one percenter, except that he spends his money advocating for rich people like him to be taxed more. I want to live in a country filled with a middle class of people who can all afford to shop in our businesses. Most people have a normal job. They get a paycheck and pay income tax, ranging from 10 to 37 percent. But people like Morris, they make a lot of their income from investments, generally stocks and real estate. These investments are taxed as capital gains, 
And things like long-term stock have a maximum tax rate of just 20%. I sold some stock. So he's got a good point there. So that's the counter argument, right? So the counter argument to, well, we need to reduce spending is we need to increase revenue. And how do we increase revenue? We need to start taxing people that, that make more money because we're not taxing them. And then he makes a really good point, this guy Morris, which is, hey, if you tax me more and you make it easier for the middle class and the lower middle class to get more money and make more money, then they have more money to spend. And they're going to spend more money, which essentially helps me, Morris, become richer. Because now I have a bigger market with more cash in hand to sell to. If you're trying to sell to a bunch of poor people, you're not going to make a ton of sales. Demand's going to be way down. But if I'm trying to sell to a bunch of people who have cash, that's who you want. The odds have become higher. Well, that's why we bitch about the whole thing with the, the, the Dave Ramsey crew and, and the other financial guys on YouTube, because they're really targeting people who already have money. They're not, their advice, what they're selling, it's not for people who don't. And people who don't still listen to them and they get screwed. It's a trap. You know, I hate to say it, but it is. And you got to spot it because when these guys get up there and they talk about, well, if you save like this and do these things, it's like, yeah, but you got to be making six figures to be in that position. You know, if you're making 40,000 a year and you're throwing all your money at your debt or something stupid like that, then now you're sudden you're broke. What if something happens? You get hurt. You can't work. If you're making six figures, well, it's probably not as big of a deal. So that's the thing is, is he's actually hit the nail on the head there, which is if we're in a system where people are more equal in their earnings, more equal in what they pay and tax for the system, all, you know, a high tide raises all boats. It's going to be a better system where people have more money. The other thing too, is if you're, you know, a hardcore capitalist, you should want this because People that have money and that are doing fairly well and that are happy are less likely to revolt. People that are broke and starving, they tend to roll out the guillotines, man. And we're starting to go to that system and now you're saying let's cut social security and all this shit. I mean, you're almost asking for it at that point. Man. I'm not condoning that violence. I'm just saying it happens. So, right. So let's finish up with Morris here real quick because I think he made he makes a really good point, and he just sort of nails the coffin shut for me as far as I'm concerned. Recently, for four hundred thousand dollars, and my taxes on that have around fifty thousand dollars, but that fifty thousand dollars is far less tax than anyone who has a job making four hundred thousand dollars a year would pay. And most of his wealth, well, isn't even taxable. People like Morris or Buffett are worth so much money because of the stock that they hold, but it's not tangible, spendable, taxable money. I can look at my stock portfolio and I can say, oh, you know, I made a million dollars this year, but it doesn't have to be anything in taxes because our system is based on only paying taxes when you actually sell something. Amazon's Jeff Bezos, the richest man in America, thanks mostly to his Amazon stock, pays almost nothing in taxes. We value his worth here, but it's never taxed unless it's turned into real money when he sells the stock and it's taxed as a capital gain. This is one way billionaires are able to be technically worth so much money, but pay so little in taxes. Some billionaires like Elon Musk. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this, boys and girls, because this is how you get away with not paying tax when you're ultra rich. Are able to get loans against their stocks and live off of that. They don't even need to sell the stock to turn it into spendable money. No sale, no taxes. 
The fact is, if you're a billionaire, you don't need any income. There's also a big loophole in capital gains taxes that the rich exploit, called the stepped-up basis. And that has to do with the states. But I can borrow money. I've done this before. Where you borrow money against the value of your stocks, you don't owe any taxes on that money. You have to pay it back, but you don't owe any tax on that money. But you can borrow, borrow. If you're a billionaire, you can borrow, 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 borrow. And never have to really pay it back because you can borrow and then pay what you borrowed. And then what happens is, is you die one day, right? Well, if you had sold your stocks, you would owe taxes on the growth of all your stocks, right? Well, the stepped up basis thing they're going to get into is if I leave my stocks to my kids, the, the basis that they would owe taxes on isn't based on when I bought them. Like if I had to pay it, right? If I sold all my stock and I had to pay it, the basis they'd have to pay is based on within six months of my debt or when I, my death, sorry. So they wouldn't have to necessarily pay any tax on any of the money I left them. So I could buy, borrow, die, leave the money to my kids and they wouldn't have to pay shit. Wow. And that's how the rich avoid paying tax. And create more rich who also can avoid paying tax. Uh -huh. So there's a system here where you can see there's a big problem where it's like, okay, if the issue is, well, we can't meet the debt ceiling or whatever, and they're going to really throw a fit about that. Okay, that's fine. But what's the issue? The issue is we don't have enough money to pay it. Now is the solution... Christina and uh, George's solution from Dave Ramsey, Skippy and I don't know, I haven't made up a fun name for her yet. We'll call her Tweedledee. Anyway, so Skippy and Tweedledee and the Fruity Dupes over there, their solution is, well, we need to cut spending. Well, what does cutting spending mean? It means taking away things like food stamps. They think cutting Social Security, right? Let's take money from the poor, right? And give it to the rich to cover the debt. That's their solution as opposed to why don't we just tax the rich and then we won't have these problems because we'd have enough income coming in that it wouldn't be an issue. Uh Oh, that was socialist. I'm sorry, everybody. Sorry. I pitched a socialist idea, <laughs> but yeah, why don't we just. Because that's the way I think as a businessman. We owe all this money. Okay, well, we either need to cut spending or we need to find a way to generate more cash. And you know what I'd always rather do as a business person? Generate more cash. Why would I cut things? That costs money. That causes problems. If I start laying people off, I have to pay unemployment. I mean, this is like, this is the stupidest shit in the world to me. You should be trying to grow the economy, not cutting it. And I'm sorry, cutting benefits to your labor damages your economy. We can argue that up and down all you want, but that's just a fact. It's just a fact. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on that? Because I think that just is the basic point right there for the whole argument. No, no, it it really is the basic point. Well, 